It's time to meet Clifton. With your host, Ray Grabowski. Welcome everybody to meet Clifton. Here's Ray. Thank you, George. Actually, that's my line. So I'm going to say it again anyhow. I can see that. Welcome to meet Clifton. Uh, tonight we have a very, very good show in store for you. A lot of good guests, as always. We have a lot of good information. So stand by. We'll be right back. Tonight's guests are Passaic County Clerk Danielle Ireland M. Hall, partner at Silk City Distillers John Bednar, Passaic County Commissioner Cassandra Lazaro, featuring the music of Swingman and the Misfit Mutt. Sit back, relax, and enjoy another episode of Meet Clifton. Okay, welcome back. My first guest tonight is Passaic County Clerk, uh, Danielle Ireland Eihoff. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mayor. It's great to be it. here. And I've asked her to come on because a lot of people don't really understand what the Passaic County Clerk does. I've just started to understand the roles, and you know, it's quite extensive. So if you could just start off with just telling us what your job, you know, in detail, little, little detail about okay. what you do. Sure. So uh, in New Jersey, every county, there are 21 counties in New Jersey, all 21 counties have an elected county clerk. The county clerk is a constitutional position in New Jersey. And a quick summary of what we do, my one-liner is we serve voters, veterans, property owners, notaries, and passport customers in Passaic County's 16 municipalities. Um. Just really quickly, because we talk about passports, and that's important. And I know we have a service in Clifton, too, also, right? Yes. Um, they come. Yes. So one of my goals and one of the things I love to do most as the county clerk is to make sure that my services are convenient and accessible. So what the mayor was just referring to was when my staff comes on the road, we call it outreach, and we go all throughout the county. We come to Clifton nearly every month, and we bring our services directly to Cliftonites. We bring our passport services to Clifton City Hall, uh, our notary oath services, and our veteran services once a month. So, so there are a lot of good questions here. Um, we're going to talk about the functions. Now, there's lesser known functions, which are? Sure. The lesser known function is definitely our uh, responsibilities to property owners. I'll give you a little history, Mayor. Sure. The word clerk is actually derived from the word cleric, which is an old medieval term. And what that word was used to describe was keeper of the record, the people who kept property records, keep the people who maintained property records and property transaction records like a deed or a mortgage. So that is uh, one of the county clerk's lesser known functions. We still maintain that responsibility. That's actually my office's largest division, recording all property transaction records for every type of property transaction throughout Passaic County. Okay, and then of course now there's the misconceptions. Yes. And I know there's a few of those. Oh, the biggest misconception is definitely that I can help you get a passport either same day <laughs> or next day or in a couple of days. <laughs> I get that question nearly every day. I wish I could uh, work magic and make that possible for our residents. Unfortunately, I cannot. My office provides the passport services for your regular routine turnaround time or expedited. But if you need like emergency turnaround time, you have to go to one of the regional facilities. The two closest to us are in Philadelphia and New York City. But if you really needed a passport quickly, it's possible. It is, but not through my office. Okay. You may have to travel, but 
Correct. Sometimes it's an emergency. I Correct. Think, you know. Yeah, in emergency situations, we connect constituents to uh, their congressional representative, mm -hmm. and that office helps make the appointment at one of the same day facilities, either in New York or in Philadelphia. Okay, so, you know, the world changes, so, and so does technology. So I'm sure your office is a lot different now through technology. Um, maybe you could explain a little bit how the differences help mm -hmm. the people. Sure. You know, because our services are so specific and they're based in state law, um, how we make them more accessible is by using technology. So a couple of examples, if you have a large family and you need passports for several children, you can go online to our website, make your appointment, give us the details, you'll be ready to go. You don't have to wait as long as you would if you are a walk-in customer, either at our outreach when we come to City Hall or in our office. Another example is social media. Since I've been in office since 2018, I've really developed our website and our social media platforms because I want to make sure that we're putting out information constantly for constituents, for voters, to make sure that everyone knows what our office is able to provide, when we provide it, and how you can access those services. And I, know, I don't know if it's one of the biggest, but elections, right? Your office is responsible for like I know in our city clerk, when elections come, uh, that's a big job for her. And I think you coordinate through the county with that? Sure. In New Jersey, we have uh, very unique election laws. County clerks are responsible for designing mail-in ballots, issuing mail-in ballots, designing machine ballots, and ultimately certifying the election results to the New Jersey Secretary of State. The other two entities that we work with in the county are the Superintendent of Elections and the Board of Elections. So together we work with our state partners, with our municipal partners, and we all run elections together. Okay, so I have a question here about rumors about this primary election coming. Is it going to be different because I think it was a court case or something? Yeah, yeah. Lots of changes. You know, I keep mentioning all these, you know, legal changes that the office is responsible for implementing. So uh, on March 29th, a federal court judge issued a federal court order throughout New Jersey that uh, is changing the way that Democratic voters in New Jersey will be voting this primary in June 2024. The change was to eliminate all rows or lines, in Passaic County we have rows, mm. and institute what's called an office block style of ballot. So actually right now my office is in the process of preparing the ballots. Ballots are to be mailed within the next week to voters who vote by mail. And so voters who are Democrats will see a change in the way their ballot looks, whether they vote by mail or on the machine. We've included a little blurb just to make it very easy to understand why voters will see this change. But again, it was for the primary election. In New Jersey, you have to be either a registered Republican or a registered Democrat to vote in the primary. As of today, there has not been any change to the Republican ballots. Things could change. Things are in court right now, statewide. But as of now, there is no change to the Republican ballots, only the Democratic primary ballots. Okay, so we don't know how that's going to look yet. The Democratic primary ballots, it will be in an office block style. So what that means is... If you could explain it. Sure, yeah. And I've tried to make the design as, um, as you know, not too foreign to us as possible. It's sort of user-friendly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So when Democrats look at the ballot for this year's primary, they're going to see each office on the ballot separated and not connected to another office. So we're going to start at U.S. President. That'll be its own box with each candidate and the delegates listed. The next box will be for United States Senate candidates, followed by House of Representatives, followed by your county races, and depending on what town you live in, your local races for mayor or council. So you'll see separate box. They will not be together. Um, I should say adjoined together like what we've seen in the past. So it's not like, like row A, row B? Exactly. We will not have row A, row B. There will be no rows on the Democratic primary ballot this year. And that's due to the federal court order. Okay. Well, that's almost like, so there's no line per se. Exactly. So everybody's running. No one really knows who's being supported technically. Yes. Technically. Now, uh, candidates who have chosen to have a designation, that's the fancy word for slogan. So sometimes you see candidates have a slogan next to their name. That will still appear next to their name. The federal court order did not take away anyone's slogan. It just said that you have to be kind of, you know, on your own, not next to any other candidate for any other office. Okay. I, I imagine they have a reason for this. It's 
hopefully a good, a good change, I would think. You know, I'm not a judge, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do have to follow what the judge has yeah. ordered, as there's, all there's other county clerks. Lately in, oh my in goodness! Elections. I mean, are yes. they still having in person a week ahead of time? Yes. Yeah, we will have early voting, in person early, early voting, voting, which is from May 29th through June 2nd. Uh, New Jersey instituted early voting years ago. I want to say in 2021 with the purpose of making voting at the polls more accessible. We all know that we lead very busy lives. Right. People have multiple jobs, they have children. We're all running around, this is New Jersey. So the governor instituted early in-person voting for major elections, like a primary, right. like a general in November, to give uh, voters more opportunities to vote in person if they're not available to vote at the polls on election day. Okay, I mean, I guess it gets more people out. It does. The idea of voting is for people to be involved. Yeah. And you know, if yes. you don't have a voice, you have to vote. Yes, you know, people yeah. say democracy is, a, is not a spectator sport. You have exactly. to get involved. You have to make sure that you find the time, you make the time to make sure that your voice is heard through your vote. Yeah, because voting can make a difference. Absolutely. And if you have enough people out there voicing their opinion, the majority technically wins. Yes. So um, it's important. For, we always try to say it's important for people. Yes. Because if you're going to complain, yeah. at least vote. I so, agree. And so. every single vote counts. I don't want anyone to ever think that they can sit this one out. What we see now, races are extremely close, down to single digit numbers. So every single vote counts at every level of what's on the ballot. Sure, because you get a couple dozen people. Exactly. It, you know, you've seen races, eight votes, nine yes, votes, yes. some even closer. Absolutely. Um, so it's important, mm -hmm. especially if you're supporting a candidate that, that you want to true. get in. So a year ahead. You know, what are our goals now for your office? Yeah, well, just to stick on that topic of oh, voting sure, of for a couple more seconds, that's one of my goals for this year. You know, coming into 2024, uh, I knew it was going to be a presidential race, of course. And our last presidential race was in 2020 yeah. when we were in the middle of the pandemic and everyone had to vote by mail because of uh, what was going on and the governor's executive orders requiring us to do so in New Jersey. So I came into 2024 prepared to approach this year and really make sure I focus and my office focuses on voter education because most people in New Jersey, most people in Passaic County have not seen a voting machine in eight years due to 2020 being vote by mail. And there's been a lot of changes. You know, most people vote during the presidential years and there's been a lot of changes since they last voted. So my office is intently focused on making sure voters have the information that they need in order to know how and when to cast their vote throughout the year. Um, another goal for 2024 is just to make sure my office stays visible. You know, we love being a visible part of our community, whether it's here in Clifton, when we come to the tank pool, when I come to different events like the Van Houten Street Fair, my I'm office very is... Very visible. Oh, yeah. And that's important. People <laughs> want to see their elected... Exactly, officials. exactly. And, you know, I want to put a friendly face to the name of the office, to our services, because let's face it, services like your notary oath and um, your property deed, it's not really that exciting. But when you know that the office is being run by a person and a team who cares, who's part of your community, I really believe that that makes a difference. And your office does make people feel welcome. Thank you. And that's Thank important you. because you know, people get nervous, especially in government. Yes. They come to your office and it's very welcoming. It's a nice atmosphere. I've heard it times. You do a fantastic Thank job. You. And, and I appreciate you coming on and explaining a few things here Thank because you, a lot of people have misconceptions about what you do. So I think we cover most of the most of the bases. And if anybody has any questions, obviously they can always call of course, your office of course. Um, for more information. Yes, so. yeah. Our website is Passaic County Clerk dot org our contact information is there and i'm very happy to reach out or uh, answer any questions that someone may have okay well, thank you for coming on i appreciate thank you it. for thank having you. me um stay tuned we'll be right back hello clifton and friends and welcome to the updates i'm sharon corbanix the recreation department invites you to attend a daddy daughter dance with the theme a night for a princess the dance will take place on Friday, May 3rd from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Recreation Center. So please be sure to register beforehand at cliftonrec.com and we hope to see you there with your beautiful daughter. The Boys and Girls Club of Clifton invites you to the Great Futures Golf Classic event on Thursday, May 9th at 7.30 a.m. at the Bowling Green Golf Course 
at 53 Schoolhouse Road in Oak Ridge, New Jersey. And for more information on that, please call the Boys and Girls Club at 973-773-0966. And the Clifton Art Center is calling all artists who are interested in showcasing their works of art for future programs. So if you're interested, please contact Roxanne at the Art Center at 973-472-5499. And on Saturday, May 18th, there will be a Memorial Rosebush dedication in memory of former Councilwoman Lauren Murphy. And that's going to be held at 1 p.m. at the Clifton Arts Center. And all are welcome to attend. And we do appreciate all the work that Lauren Murphy had done for the city of Clifton. And she had definitely set the pace for others to follow in her footsteps. So we do appreciate that. And the Athenia Business Association is presenting their annual Clifton Street Fair on Van Houten Avenue on Sunday, September 15th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now, this event is still accepting both vendors and sponsors. So if you'd like to be a vendor or sponsor, please call Christine at 201-418-1686. And this event has grown so much over the years with many vendors and participants, and everybody has a great time that day. So please do attend, and vendors, whether it's food or merchandise, please call Christine. And thank you again for your time and attention. We hope to see you around town. And thank you again for watching our show. We appreciate it. Back. Uh, my next guest, Mr. John Bendar, he's a partner and distiller at Silk City Distilleries in Clifton. And we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, call it spirits. Yes, that's uh, what we make. Spirits. But how did, how did you get involved in this? Is it a family thing? or? No, no not really. I mean, the, the only way it's a family thing is my, my father, uh, you know, came here from Poland in the 60s. And he was a, a real do-it-yourself, do-everything guy. And he kind of was hardworking and he taught us to also we could work and do things and make things and uh, so one day uh, the uh, governor Christie was uh, granting licenses for craft distillers and my brother was like you know he's this, this this is like an opportunity like what do you think and I don't know for some reason I just blurted it out like I think this is what we're supposed to do uh, because you know I'm an engineer my brother's also a computer engineer my father was all kinds of manufacturing he worked in pharmaceuticals we kind of had this, uh, you know, methodology and an ability to do things like that, but we don't have any kind of story in our family like, oh, my great great grandfather yeah, made alcohol. Yeah, yeah. No, we from West Virginia. yeah, <laughs> but we didn't we didn't do that. But we just we just decided like this is a process like manufacturing anything else. And uh, me and my brother, we actually worked at Mario's growing up, oh. and we got into food, we got into wine and beer and. And we liked whiskey, and, and uh, we figured let's uh, try to get in on the ground floor or something. So, so you're looking for a location. Were you, were you anywhere else first? Or? Uh, yeah, we did go to um, Patterson first because we're Silk City, but uh, unfortunately it, it didn't really work out uh, because they, the business model is that we manufacture spirits uh, for sale, both wholesale and retail, uh, but we also have a tasting room. And we, uh, the main thing is that we're a destination that people will oh, come okay. and visit. And Patterson's uh, would not budge from uh, the Bunker Hill location. Yeah. Not the, not really wouldn't bring in the most uh, customers that we would need. We wanted to be by the falls, right. but that really wasn't, uh, that wasn't in the cards at the time. Uh, so we just kept moving on, and then we found this spot across the street from Rutt's Hut. That's perfect. And we were like, man, everybody knows Rutt's Hut. Of like, course. this would be, so we, 
uh, the building we moved into was the original uh, Jade Fountain right. site. Which and everyone uh, remembers that's been in Clifton. Yeah, so uh, right after um, we started the process, you know, the building was only zoned for like construction, storage, and right. like warehousing. So we had to go before the zoning board and, you know, we went to speak with, uh, at the time, Mayor Anzaldi and the uh, Economic Development Board. And, uh, you know, we worked together with them and got it zoned and, you know, just, uh, you know, busted our butts and worked and worked and worked to get it rolling. Right. How and, long have you been in Clifton now? Uh, the distillery? Yeah. Well, I mean, your business. Uh, the business is uh, about seven years. Seven years already. Right? Yeah. Maybe a little bit more before, but. So. I mean, I'm looking at a bottle. It's pretty impressive. Thank you. Um, what other spirits do you make? We like to concentrate on bourbon, which is well, like the Polish. You think you're doing vodka? Well, we have a vodka <laughs> also. Yeah, we do. We do a full range because in our tasting room, uh, we are only able to serve a product that we manufacture right. on site. So we can't have wine or beer or anything like that. But we have to have a range of spirits. So we have rye whiskey, bourbon whiskey. We have uh, rums, we have a variety, oh, white nice. rum, dark rum, we make gin, we make vodka, and then, but our main focus is whiskeys, and uh, me and my brother uh, really like to experiment and make a lot of, make things that just aren't available. You know, we've made whiskey using oats, we made a whiskey using quinoa. Wow. You know, so we like to offer, if people are into it, we have some really cool experimental stuff that you know you can't find in jersey and you might not even find it in in the rest of the u.s you know so if you want to come down and have a taste so well, that's not what i'm saying so the people listening is, is this is do you give tours I mean, like they come down to your place is it like a tour thing or can they buy after the, you know, yeah the yeah so, so well, the, what they come down what it is well basically you can, you can come in uh you know we're open wednesday through sunday um and people can come in and uh, we have a tasting room so uh, we have a full menu of cocktails made with our spirits. And uh, if they would like, we could take them on a whole tour to show them how we manufacture the spirits and explain our history and, and other important things like, uh, like all of oh, the grain. Like we contracted a farmer here in Jersey to basically grow all the grain we make the whiskey from. Uh, so the, the corn and rye come from Jersey. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a nice. true, it's a true New Jersey product. I mean, it's, you know, now in these days of uh, things coming from China and everything, like the, the, the corn comes from uh, Sussex and the rye comes from Sussex and we process it. I mean, this is actually made in Clifton, right on River Road. We're, we're there on the weekends, me and my brother, and we're covered in dust and we're cooking down corn. And uh, other weekends we're, we're distilling, we're bottling. Everything gets done on premise. So I'm, I'm looking at the back, it says aged at least 36 months. Yeah. That means you made this three years ago. Yeah. We have, we have a spirit still. We have one that's older than, we just released a seven year old. Okay. And we have, so we have stuff from about, I think 2016 that we barreled. So when you first started, you couldn't sell anything. Then, Correct. Right? Technically. Technically, yeah. I don't know what the shortest. It's not the best business plan. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we spend all this money to make all this whiskey and stick it on the shelf and look at it. <laughs> and wait. Yeah. But, but that's, but I guess that's whiskey. It's turned around. Yeah. Right. Now it's turned around. Now for you're us. doing it. So some of, I know they want, we, we could leave the address here. They could come for tours. Yeah. But if someone wants to buy this product, is it sold elsewhere? Yes. We, I mean, we sell everything on premise, but then we're also in uh, retailers like uh, Shoppers Vineyard on, oh. on Bloomfield Have carries the whole line. Uh, Stu Leonard's on Route 3. They carry our product, mostly just the bourbon. And, uh, you know, places like Shannon Rose, uh, Spuntino's, they have our uh, spirits on the shelf behind the, the bar. And, uh, you know, we're also uh, available at other retailers like a Monte Vino in right. Montclair. Uh, but mostly we uh, we have our stuff in uh, restaurants. Okay. Yeah, you I think all good reviews. Yeah. I'm yeah, we whiskey drinker per se. But, uh -huh. Yeah, we've uh, gotten very good reviews. Uh, we take a lot of care to make this product. Uh, like I said, it's uh, we people like the small manufacturers better than the giant manufacturers yeah. because we do take you know, a lot of time to make sure everything's right. Well, I've been to your place and, yeah. you know, you can see it's done. It's not the, the process in the factory and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this is, you can see this is a family thing. It's happy. Yeah. It happens right there. All the parts happen. I mean, there's, you know, technically, 
you know, we could buy our whiskey from another distiller in the Midwest and we could just take that whiskey and, and put it in the bottle. Right, right, for sure. But that's not, it's you know. labels. Yeah, that, that's not what we do. We, we got a little more pride. Uh, we're really, you know, we're really happy and proud of what we've done. And uh, we're, it's really great on the weekends to, to greet all the people that come in. We have people that come from Brooklyn, keep people that come from upstate New York. Well, it's interesting. And it's always surprising, yeah. like, you know. And, you know, and it's always like, well, you know, we heard that you're here in Rutz Huts across the street. So <laughs> they want to come check everything out from Clifton. <laughs> nah, you know? I mean, we're happy you're in Clifton. You know? Yeah. Clifton welcomes business, especially when diversified business is, is, is really great. So I hope people come out and see this and uh, I'm sure you do well. It's been growing every year. Yeah. It's been growing. And it will. Every, because, uh, yeah. Years go by. Yeah. <laughs> John, I appreciate you coming on. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It was I great, to, great to be here. about this. Um, uh, yeah, Thank and if you're, if you're interested, uh, come on down to the distillery. I'm usually there on the weekends. Uh, come and find me. We talk about whiskey. I'll show you how it's made. Okay, good. I, pr I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be right back. Welcome back. My next guest uh, is Sandy Lazari. She's a Passaic County Commissioner, um, and she's here to talk about the upcoming great event that's coming up, the Vietnam Wall that's going to be made permanent in Passaic County. So just let's start off with how did this even come about? Because this is very big for our veterans. This is very big for all of us. Um, back in 2018, I was, um, I worked with, uh, Veterans Post 174 in Wayne. And they reached out to me and because I happened to know, you know, the gentleman that was running it, Billy. And he said, CN, does the county want to partner with VFW 174 and bring the traveling wall? Right. Billy Hernandez. Bill, oh, you know, oh, he oh, was course. a police officer in town. <laughs> Billy Hernandez, Hernandez, of course. I've known Billy since he was yep. a little kid. Great guy. Anyway, yeah. So Billy did. <laughs> I'm glad you know him. Um, so we got together, we formed this little committee, and it was just worked out beautifully. We had the spot to put it. We, you know, the county did a lot of the landscaping. It just, I don't know, were you up there? I actually donated my band for the event. Oh, okay. So you were there. Oh, yeah. So you saw. It was great. It was awesome. After the wall left, we all kind of felt like kind of, I don't know, like, you know what? This was really good. There was a lot of veterans who came to the wall. It was a source of comfort to them. It was a source of pride. And I sat down with our county administrator at the time, Tony DeNova. I said, can we get a permanent wall? And he was like on board immediately. My colleagues on the freeholder uh, commissioner board were all on, on board with us. and. We started the process in 2018. Well, you know what happened, the pandemic, pandemic. hit. Yeah. So we had to take a break from that because we had way too much to do with the pandemic. And after things calmed down, we, we started again. We reached out to a company in Texas. They, they're the ones who make the wall. And we ordered it, but there were supply chain issues. So, a lot of people were saying, hey, you know what, this is never going to happen. And, I, and I, I knew in my heart this was going to happen, and it did. So that's the start of it. Yeah. And now on May 18th at 10 a.m. in Wayne at the Public Safety Academy on Oldham Road, we will have a dedication ceremony for the Vietnam Wall. And we plan on having a great tribute to our veterans. You know, Ray, I don't know if I told you this. I have a very good friend of mine who fought in Vietnam. When he came home, he went, and he was at the airport, people were yelling at him, spitting at him, calling him names. He had to go into the men's room, change his clothes to put on civilian clothes, and couldn't put his uniform back on until he landed in New Jersey. And that always stuck with me. 
and I was like, you know what? These gentlemen and these women who fought in Vietnam have to be recognized. We've had a, listen, that, I came out of that era. Um, I have cousins that have served. My cousin Michael just passed away, was in a Marine, two tours. Um, so I've heard all the stories about Vietnam, and people forget that these young men were drafted. Right. They had no choice. 18 years old, 120 pounds, stick a rifle in their hand. It's different, you know, um, from, from one that you join. Nothing against any other vets. But Vietnam, it was a special time where these men and women went down and gave their lives, and they didn't even know what they were doing here. So they I know this, this wall is very important to a lot of people. It is. Um, and it's I hope Billy's going to come to this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because actually, I'm scheduling a conference call with him for Friday. Because when he started talking about the travel, he said to me, Ray, somehow you have to get this permanently put in here. It's open for Clifton, but it, that didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, we're going to do this. And apparently he reached out to you. And uh, yeah. you know, he's very passionate about this. Um, and I, I'm sure it's going to be a great event, uh, rain or shine. And, and it's permanent. It's going to be a destination you know, for Passaic County people um, all around. Because the next, I guess the next place would be uh, Washington, right? Where the so, or the there, wall, are there other walls, other, other states? Um, permanent Homedale. Okay. Well, yeah, of course, the, yeah. yeah, Homedale. But the wall that Passaic County is putting up is 80% the size of the one in Washington. Which is, which is pretty amazing. It's huge. Yeah, and you've seen it, I know. It's, yeah. uh, it's very emotional to oh, see yes, that, because, you know, I know I can recognize names on that wall. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's sad, you know, because I grew it's up so in the sad. Vietnam era, so... Um, this is an incredible tribute to these veterans, and I'm glad that you were able to make this work. Yeah, and it's so well deserved. It's it's a labor of love getting so this. So we're gonna up. we're gonna put this on. There's a flyer here. We're gonna have that shown. Um, if anybody needs any more information, can they contact you? Absolutely. <clears throat> and where would yep. they do that? Um, uh, well, it's on our yeah, website, the Passaic County NJ org. I know Lou Imhoff has his contact information okay. on that flyer right. so they can also contact Lou okay um, and you know what will help anybody listen okay. anything and we will put this flyer on that will continually be shown on the cable station um, and the nice thing about our cable station is any towns that have Fios in the state will see will see this little tidbit about the show and they will be seeing these flyers constantly so oh, well, that's um, good. we're gonna really try to make this a great event and I mean, I appreciate you coming, George. Don't forget uh, YouTube too, right? Oh, yeah, it'll be on YouTube. Yeah, it'll be on there. Constantly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, after we'll Friday. Yeah. Even more. Yeah. And Same. just as a li another little plug, we are having a veteran stand down on Saturday at Say County Tech. Yes, I, I had that. I didn't bring it there. Okay. Yeah, I have that flyer on okay. my phone. Okay, if you can, yeah, if you can get that. I'll get that to you. It, it's resources and it's a big focus on homeless veterans okay. and their families, no, but I, all veterans. I appreciate you coming. You know, Clifton's a big veteran town. I know um, you, you know, are. We have a lot of respect for our veterans, um, and this is very important. So I appreciate you explaining this, and hopefully we'll have a great turnout. So thank you very much oh, for the information. Thank you for having me. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> that's our show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot of information. Um, I know George did. He yes, had a good time. So. Uh, actually, the guests were very interesting tonight. We had a lot of great information. So uh, stay tuned next time. We'll have more guests next month. But in the meantime, be good to your friends and family. Respect your neighbors. Keep Clifton close to your heart. This is a great city. Thank you. God bless and good night. Not <laughs>